Who do you think would be the next world champion? This is so tough. I would say that the next world champion is a very big shout out. Thank you all for joining us at hashtag Ask Yasser, and I will be very glad to answer all of your questions. This is our second session. Let's get started. What has chess added to your life apart from the skills over the board? For me personally, and I've always felt that this was a big difference on a scale of many, many players, is it brought a great deal of discipline to me. I felt that uh, to learn chess and learn chess properly, I had to d dedicate myself in a certain way. And that self-motivation, that dedication to learning actually helped me in all fields of my life. Anything I wanted to learn, I took the approach, a very disciplined approach that I took to chess. What's your favorite gambit? Benko gambit. Benko gambit for me is one of those gambits that really slowly sneaks up on you. Most gambits are looking for instant action and reactions. Whereas the Benko gambit is a gambit that sustains itself for a long series of moves. So for me, uh, the Benko gambit is actually kind of poisonous. Do you play other games besides chess? Yeah, I actually loved, when I was a kid, the game of Monopoly. I had no idea that today there's Monopoly world champions. I'm like, what? So for me, uh, board games were always a part of the family life. I enjoyed board, board games. Um, uh, I became pretty good, I want to say, uh, at backgammon. I would probably give myself a 2,100 rating. Uh, I like the game of Go a lot, but I'm really weak. I, boy, I, I would say I'm like 700 <laughs> in the game of Go, but I really, really respect the game. And when I see something beauteous in the game of Go, I'm thrilled. I also like the game of five in a row. It's a very simple game, but uh, I've always found it remarkably challenging. French or Carl Kahn? Both, both, why can't I have both? Uh, when I play the Carl Kahn, I want to play a French without my light squared bishop. When I play the French defense, I want to play a, a, a line of the French that gets rid of <laughs> my light squared bishop. So solve the light squared bishop problem, play a French or a Karakan, it's great. In your opinion, who was the strongest player to never win the world championship title? I don't think it's close, but for me it was Victor Korchnoi. Victor Korchnoi was a force of nature. Uh, even much old, elderly in his career, uh, well after most chess players hit their prime, he was still playing incredibly competitive chess. If we think about his candidate's final, 1974, against Anatoly Karpov, a, a 24-game match that he lost three victories to two, one point, Karpov wins, goes on to challenge Fischer. Karpov wins by forfeit. 1978. A world championship match. A genuine world championship match. Korchnoi loses 6-5. to five. 1981. He loses in Murano very badly in a very, very off-form manner. So literally, he played three matches for the world championship, and it was only, you know, like this monstrous genius called Anatoly Karpov that stopped him. Of course, we can talk about Paul Karez II and his failures, Akiva Rubinstein, his failures. Uh, we can talk about David Bronstein. And there are another, uh, there are a number of players that 
just, you know, for some reason didn't make it. But for me, Victor Korchnoi was the guy who was just so, so close. I mean, literally a move, a move or two away. Can you tell us your favorite Bronstein story, please? <laughs> too many. There are too many. One that I, uh, that, that's a small story. I have many, many long stories, but one, just a little tiny story. And I thought it was somehow so beautiful. So it was here in Holland, and there was a tournament in uh, The Hague that was sponsored by the Dutch insurance company, Aegon. And it was man versus computer. And they had all of these human players and all of these computer players from the local challenger to the supercomputers. And it was all of this big, big, big interaction. Unfortunately, that series of events stopped when Gary Kasparov lost to Deep Blue in 1997. But prior to that, it was really, really a fun event. And David Pronstein played, and I did too. I played like three editions of that tournament. It was after a round that David came to me with a book. And he said, yes, sir, could you please sign this book for a friend of mine? His name is, let's say, Arthur. I said, David, of course. So dear Arthur, sign it. And I give the, he says, no, no, no. From your hands to Arthur, Arthur, come here. My friend, you see, he's very shy, but I want you to give it from your hands directly to his hands, which I did. I did it, and that's the end of the story, except the story lingered and stayed with me, this idea of old world manners, this idea from my hands to your hands without an in-between. And I just like that because this idea of manners is always something I've kept dear to my heart. I don't want to be rude to others. Quite the contrary. I want to be well-mannered. And I felt that this insight to David in that particular moment was very, very special. What do you do after 1c4, e5, knight c3, King E7. <laughs> well, I can tell you that as white, sadly, no one has played King E7 in that specific position against me. And that's that's been a tragedy of my career. <laughs> uh, I would probably play D4. I would not hastily play knight d5 check, knight d5 check, king back to e8. And I don't think my advantage of making the check move is as big as if I start with the move d4 in that specific position. Who do you think would be the next world champion? Hmm, this is so tough. Because if you had asked me that question 20 years ago, I would not have told you, not even close, that the next world champion would come from Norway. I would say that some junior talents, whether they be in India or China, or for that matter, the United States, uh, where the country is most likely to produce a champion today, I feel that the great equalizer, the internet, the computer, the databases of games, the tools that we use allow great talents to come from any country. Now, I would say that the next world champion is today between 14 and 19 years old. And I don't know who that is. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you so very much for submitting all of the questions. They were really some 
good ones and I enjoyed answering. Unfortunately, of course, we couldn't answer all of the questions, but I encourage you to continue uh, to send them as we'll do more of these hashtag Ask Yasser sessions. But I have to say that for me, uh, I don't get asked a question like this every day. Uh, the, the person had said, C4, E5, Knight, C3, King, E7, what do you do as white? Somebody's out there is thinking. This is a hilarious asinine question. So that question was worthy of a free winning chess tactics course. I hope you enjoy it very, very much. Keep the questions coming. Push em, baby. Yeah, baby. Push em, baby. Yeah, baby. Push em, baby. Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking. 